Hello, hello, hunters. I'm Azotharian, and in this video, I'll go over the newly announced pack leader hero talent tree for Beast Mastery and Survival Hunters in the upcoming War Within expansion. I will describe every ta talent in detail and do some napkin math on DPS gains and proc rates and so on. And I'll offer some of my own thoughts for Blizzard on how these could be a little bit better and give you some tools you can use to form your own feedback for Blizzard to make Hunter the best it can be in War Within. So without further ado, let's get started. So the pack leader starts out with a vicious hunt, which is the central mechanic. Kill command prepares you to viciously attack in coordination with your pet, dealing additional physical damage with your next kill command. So if we just translate this into plain English, every second kill command, if we read it, so kill command prepares you blah 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 with your next kill command. So every second kill command will do extra damage. Um, so... So first of all, just looking at how this affects BM versus Survival. So BM casts roughly twice as many kill commands as Survival does, um, in uh, at least in Season 3 of Dragonflight. Now, in the War Within, we're going to lose some stats and things are going to change in other ways. So, and th that is a good preface for this whole thing. A lot of the napkin math I'm going to be doing and the discussions are assuming numbers based on Dragonflight Season 3, which will of course not be relevant in the War Within. It's just the best I have at the moment. There's just no way to know the exact numbers of everything in the War Within. But one thing we can know pretty reliably is that our stats will be lower. And that this means, you know, if, if we're casting, uh, let's say, 60 kill commands a minute now, it's probably going to be 10 to 20% lower uh, because we'll probably have 10 to 20% less haste going into the next expansion. So just keep that in mind. These numbers are sort of placeholders. They're meant to give you a rough idea of how these things stack up relative to each other. The absolute numbers are not really that important. All right, so currently BM casts twice as many kill commands as survival, meaning already from the get-go, it seems like we'll get more of these interesting vicious hunt proc for, uh, procs for BM than for uh, survival. All right, next up is pack coordination. So attacking with vicious hunt instructs your pet to strike with the basic attack. So, you know, once again, just gonna hop straight over here to talk about the what this actually means. So every second kill command will cause your pet to cast the basic attack. That is what this says. Now, what is a basic attack? You might think it's an auto attack, but no. The basic attack is the claw, bite, slash, smack mechanic of your pet. So these will be cast roughly the same amount of times, at least baseline for Beast Mastery and Survival. But the BM ones are much, much stronger because basic attacks from your pets scale with haste. So already, like, we're two talents deep and this is already looking much more pro BM just because of mastery scaling and just general pet centricness. Um, which shouldn't be surprising just given the theme of this, but you know, I thought I'd mention it. Alright, next up is Hell of the Pack. So basically, basic attack crits will give uh, a stacking buff 5% crit damage for 6 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. So obviously, because this is procced by basic crits, it means to gain this crit damage bonus, we need a ton of crit. So this is a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more uptime we can get on this, the more crit damage we're going to have with more uptime, which means that crit is going to have more value, and this sort of spirals and sort of feeds itself in this sort of positive feedback loop. Basically, I think that running pack leader in um, in the war within is going to be a crit a pretty important step. Another small thing here is that so when you uh, like with this stacking buff of hell of the pack, with all these uh, basic attack critical strikes, it becomes very important to actually get as many. Um, basic attacks off as we can. Now, we don't have a ton of ways in which we can manipulate how many basic attacks we get, but BM does have one key talent that is in our current talent tree uh, that you can see right here. It's called Brutal Companion. You've probably run it a little bit in this expansion. Uh, forgive me as I uh, try to zoom the right way. Now fumble a little bit with uh, my uh, computer. Alright, so right here. Brutal Companion. When barb shot causes frenzy to stack up to three, so that will be most of the barb shots you're gonna do, because generally we get to three stacks of frenzy pretty quickly, then we just stay there. Your pet will immediately use its special attack. Here they use a different term, they say special attack, but what they mean is basic attack and deal 50% bonus damage. All right, so I could imagine that this talent will now be mandatory for BM uh, going into the war within, just because it will give us more uh, basic attacks that are going to feed into Howl of the Pack, which is going to give us more crit damage, which of course affects absolutely everything. So re just remember, this is crit damage, not critical chance. And this is an important distinction, because crit damage increases the value of additional crit chance, like the crit stat, whereas if it was crit chance, then it would actually reduce the value of crit on your gear. Alright, then recovery. 
So then recovery is um, a the defensive note here. So aspect of the turtle, survival of the fittest, and uh, meant pet, interestingly, uh, give a 20% heal over uh, 4 seconds. And if you use them under 50% HP, they will be uh, for 25% HP over 5 seconds. So the turtle and survival of the fittest things here, not super interesting. I mean... Turtle, you're usually going to be, you know, immune anyway. So, like, getting a small heal, it doesn't hurt, but it's not that great. Survival of the fittest, it's great if you're using survival of the fittest to survive a powerful dot or, like, uh, ticking damage in the raid. So, this is fine. But Ment Pet basically becomes a defensive button now with a 10-second cooldown that's going to heal you for 20% of your HP most of the time over 4 seconds. So, it's going to be, like, a weaker exhale, essentially. A little bit of an addition to a self-healing kit, which is... Decent, I suppose, especially because BM really struggles with self-sustain. What does suck is that it's on the GCD, and I really wish that Ment Pet for this reason would be off the GCD, and I think that would just be a generally good change. So I guess that would be suggestion number one uh, for Blizzard is consider uh, making Ment Pet, because we, we have so many defensives on the GCD now, with Exil being used really regularly and being on the GCD. I mean, it's already annoying that Acceleration is on the GCD, but now we're also going to have Ment Pet occupying kind of the same role slash territory in terms of your defensive kit, like how you use it, and they're both on the GCD. I think it would be fair if Ment Pet was off GCD in exchange for, you know, being a significantly weaker heal than Exil was. Just something to think about. Alright, so on, on the other hand, it does have a, like, a super short cooldown, so you can use it quite regularly, but you know, this is up to Blizzard. But I don't think, I think it's going to be very difficult to make BM or Hunter in general have too much self-sustain. So, you know, I would appreciate a little, like a sliver of generosity on the front of Hunter self-sustain. You can always dial it back if you decide it's too much, Blizzard. Alright. Next up is uh, Frenzy Tear. So once again, I've just translated it. Basics have a 20% chance to reset the cooldown of Kill Command and buff uh, it by 30%. So when I say buff it, that means the Kill Command that you just reset the cooldown of, it's going to be buffed by 30% damage done. So all the more reason that having more basics is going to uh, improve uh, this talent a lot. So I actually broke down the math here for both BM and Survival to talk about, okay, how are we going to get more basics? Because that seems to be what this is all about. Like, we want as many basics as uh, possible. So, uh, and once again, this is based on Dragonflight Season 3 numbers, which are not going to be like long-term uh, relevant, but the relative numbers are going to be fine. So both Survival and BM, they get uh, one basic every three seconds from a pet. That's the cooldown. That's just what you get uh, straight up baseline with nothing else. All right. But then uh, BM gets a one basic attack from every second kill command thanks to pet coordination. So if we go up here and check, every second kill command causes your pet to cast a basic attack. It's not exactly what it does, but that's what we uh, sort of translated to. Really, it's uh, the basic attack happens with your next barb shot. But all that you need to, like, like the only distance between this tooltip and the simplified one I made is that as long as you do don't cast three kill commands between barb shots, which is almost, it, it's very difficult at least, um, you're not going to override these procs. So for all intents and purposes, every second um, kill command, you're going to get a basic attack. All right. And of course, as we just talked about, BM ca casts almost twice as many kill commands as survival does. So I've even broken down the math of that. So... Roughly, we get a uh, kill command every 2.3 seconds, meaning that we get a basic every 4.6 seconds on average. And I've translated this into 0 0.22 BPS, or bytes per second. Then, in addition, when we run the uh, Brutal Companion talent, we get an additional basic every time, almost every time we barb shot, because we have to be in free frenzy stacks first. Uh, and that happens with current numbers roughly every 4.2 seconds. So this is 0 0.24 BPS. Basically, it, this translates to uh, 0.79 BPS on average, or a basic every 1.3 seconds, or roughly a kill command reset plus 30% damage proc every 6.4 seconds on average with the current numbers. Um, and for survival, I did the same math. I'm not going to walk it all through again, but it's a little bit different, obviously, because we don't cast as many kill commands and we don't have access to Brutal Companion. But it translates to you basically get a frenzy tear proc 
uh, roughly every 12 seconds on average with current numbers. So you get half, roughly half the amount of procs of survival as you get for BM and the kill commands that you do get in this damage proc are obviously, is obviously much weaker because survival kill commands are so much weaker than BM ones. So just overall, it seems like if this is really, if this is just okay for BM, then it's going to be really bad for survival. Um, just based on the tuning. So I think that something needs to happen with to make it stronger for survival in some uh, in direct or indirect way. Because right now it just looks like unless you completely overtune the BM side of this, it's going to be really weak for survival and that's not good. Um, so yeah. One thing I forgot to mention is uh, back up here, wild attacks. I didn't like translate it here because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, every third pet basic attack is a guaranteed crit with damage further increased by critical strike chance. This is just kind of passive. Uh, obviously, the second part uh, further increases the value of um, crit by a significant uh, lot. I don't think, you know, whether we had that or not, I still think crit would be an insanely powerful stat for BM uh, with this hero talent tree. Uh, but yeah, worth noting. All right, next is a little choice note. This is uh, probably the lowest point of the tree, in my opinion. So, Tyler's Hunt aspect of the cheetah is an extra 15% movement speed for another 8 seconds. So... This seems to be at the end of the... So basically, it extends Cheetah by 8 seconds with a 15% uh, movement speed buff. This is pretty then subtle. Very, very small advantage. The uh, alternative is Cornered Prey, which is Disengage increases the range of all your attacks by 5 yards for 5 seconds. Also really weak. So it's only 5 yards, which is like, a f like 2 steps of your character. And it's only 5 seconds, which is like 3 globals or so, maybe. Maybe 4. Both of these like are really close to worthless. And I just think that maybe we could do something a little bit more interesting here. Or, or just make these same ones stronger. Like, does the, like, is 45 yards just too much for BM? That seems a little bit uh, ridiculous. Like, why, why couldn't this be something more interesting? Like, but why couldn't it, the numbers just be like quadrupled? Or maybe not quadruple, but like maybe quadruple the range so we get 60 yard range. Like this would actually matter in a fight. For like 10 seconds, half a cooldown window, uh, something like that. I know it's tied to disengage, which is a relatively short cooldown, but still like 25% uptime on five yards of extra range. Like you just, I don't see you ever actually playing around that because five seconds is not enough to actually establish a proper rotation. Um, this is not some a mechanic that you would ever like save disengage for to use it at a proper time because five yards just doesn't make the difference. So if this was stronger, uh, then I could see you actually holding disengage for particular moments of a fight to really make good use of this, and I think that could be interesting. But it's just too undertuned, in my opinion. And Tyler's Hunt, this cheetah thing, it's just like all barely noticeable. Uh, yeah, just undertuned, in my opinion. I feel, yeah, I don't think Hunter is generally lacking in mobility, but I mean, if you're gonna make a, a cheetah based uh, a talent node here, I think it could be a little bit stronger. All right. So next up is a covering fire uh, and a scatter prey choice node. So uh, beast mastery, its kill command increases the duration of beast cleave by one second. Usually in a beast cleave window, we're going to get two to three kill commands off. Depends how well we set it up. And so we'll just have to refresh beast cleave less often. So, so this is pretty good, uh, both from a gameplay and power perspective. I just like it a lot. It's good. For survival, it's uh, Wildfire Bomb reduces the cooldown of Calf or Butchery by two seconds. So this is also pretty good. This enhances the main survival AoE gameplay loop, which is basically throw uh, bombs and use Butchery to get those um, bombs back off cooldown and then throw more bombs and repeat. So now, like, this basically feeds itself. When you hit Wildfire Bomb, you're going to get more Butcheries, which are going to give you more Wildfire Bombs and so on. This is fun. Like, some of the most fun you can have in uh, AoE, I would argue, is lobbing bombs at your target, using a single butchery, getting them all back and repeating. Like, survival burst AoE openers are really, really fun. I think this is great. Scattered Prey, however, is, uh, you can see, I broke down the DPS increase. Because uh, this is basically based on, you know, obviously AoE mechanics for the most part. So, multi-shot increases the damage of your next multi-shot by 25%. Now, let's just say this buff is permanent. So instead of it being, you know, like on, off, on, off this buff, let's just assume that it's on, on, on. In Mythic Plus, based on current multi-shot numbers, it is a 0.06% DPS increase for my character. Not a typo. 
This talent is almost worthless. It is so worthless that I think it might be a placeholder. That is just how underwhelming and garbage it is. You will never ever pick this. And honestly, I really hope they'll put in something like... Like, honestly, I just don't like... Okay, fine. Multishot is useless for BM. Like, let's not pretend that it isn't by making these pointless talents, in my opinion. Uh, if you want to make these talents, then first make Multishot an interesting ability for BM. But currently, it is just a Beast Cleave uh, vehicle. And, and you, maybe that's fine, but then don't make talents like this. That's just my opinion. All right. For survival, it's 1.2% DPS based on, um, yeah, so obviously rough numbers. That this is okay, but it's still much weaker than covering fire in all likelihood, so I don't think you'll see it used. But at least 1.2% is, uh, you know, an order of magnitude better than 0.06% um, for scattered prey. All right. Next up is Call the Herd. I wrote down the math on this as well. So fundamentally, it's kill shot deals an additional 30% damage over 5 seconds. So let's just ignore the over 5 seconds part because it doesn't matter. It's 30% additional damage. And... It increases, or well, the talent itself, I don't think the kill shot does it in this buff, increases the bleed damage unit pets deal by, to the target buff 25%. So what's bleed damage? Well, for BM, it is Master Marksman and Barb Shot and Bloodshed. But Bloodshed does almost no damage, so we don't really think about it. But Master Marksman for both BM and Survival is pretty strong. And thus it comes out to, and then there's, yeah, so Barb Shot for, um, for BM, it comes out to 0.7% single target just from the kill shot amp. Kill shot for BM is obviously super weak, barely worth using. It's not going to be a little bit more worth using now, but like 0.7% is still pretty weak, just rounding up. But the bleed amp is actually pretty strong at 3.4% single target. Once again, napkin math. Um... And combine like 4% from this, I guess, that's, that's a pretty solid amount. Uh, it's quite a bit less on AoE, however. I basically, you know, so we barely use kill shot on AoE. And it's like very close to like, you can basically, for AoE, for Mythic Plus and stuff, you can just think of this as basically like scatter prey, like borderline useless. Um, and in AoE, it's uh, significantly weaker because Barb Shot has less, uh, much smaller um, contribution as well as Master Marksman in AoE than it does in single target. So, like, it's roughly half value on AoE compared to a single target. Um, and maybe that's okay. Like, it is Kill Shot after all. It's meant to be sort of a single target node. But uh, yeah, just uh, worth keeping in mind. Now, for survival, it's just a little bit weaker across the board. So, our bleed sources on survival are internal bleeding via Shrapnel Bomb. And it is uh, Master Marksman as well. And then there's a Bloodseeker as well. So, yeah, so roughly, like, maybe a little bit above 1% single target from the kill shot amp. Obviously, on AoE, we can actually get a bit more. We'll get to that. Uh, and then, you know, 3% or maybe a little bit more from the bleed amp. I think it, when I made these numbers, I forgot to include Bloodseeker. So that's my bad. So the numbers are probably a little bit higher than this. Just keep that in mind. But yeah, the KS amp on AoE is actually stronger than a single target. But that assumes that we're using the Birds of Prey talent, which is what makes a kill shot basically hit four targets during a cooldowns. Kill shot can actually become a decently powerful cleave button when you run that talent. But if you don't run that talent, um, then, you know, it's pretty close to worthless uh, for Mythic Plus. Uh, and uh, the bleed amp is 2.2%, uh, so a little bit weaker than the single target as well. So I think this is overall okay. Um, like the, the BM part of it like hugely relies on the bleed amp but I suppose that's okay provided that we continue to run Master Marksman yeah it's overall uh, just fine alright next up we have a Furious Assault versus Beast of Opportunity so I've broken it down for BM here so every Frenzied Tear K uh, Kill Command which is so as we talked about earlier this in the napkin math here we get roughly one dose every 6.4 seconds so Roughly every 6.4 seconds on average, uh, our kill command has a 50% chance to reset barb shot and do 30% extra damage. Now, so if we just read the tooltip as it is, it says your pet's basic attack, 20% chance to reset a kill command and cause kill command to strike a second time for 30... Uh, no, sorry, I'm reading the wrong thing. Um, consuming Fancy Tear has a 50% chance to reset a cooldown of barb shot and deal 30% additional damage. So let's just like restructure the sentence. Consuming Frenzy Tear has a 50% chance to deal 30% additional damage. So depending on how you sort of break this sentence up, does that mean that the, uh, this 30% extra 
uh, like smaller kill command gets, gets buffed by thirty uh, percent, in which case it's roughly like ten percent of a kill command worth of extra damage. Um, I don't know for sure. That is my guess, just based on the wording. But you could like argue for other wordings as well. But then you, of course, you get this uh, cooldown reset of barb shot. That is not worth that much right now. It might be worth a bit more in War Within when we don't have so many uh, barb shot procs and everything. Uh, we'll see about that. Um, but yeah, that means we're going to get one of these procs roughly every 13 seconds on average. A bit less in uh, War Within. Um, little bits, I, I guess that's reasonably frequent for a barb shot proc. Um, but given, like, let's assume this is equivalent to just 10% of a cooldown. It feels a little undertuned to me. Um, like, barb shots are just not that powerful and we only get one every 13 seconds. It's like a really bad wild call in a way. Uh, so not a huge fan of it. For survival, it's even worse because the proc rate we're going to get on it effectively is because of the math we did here, right, every 12 seconds on average. Um, but instead of like giving us a free uh, barb shot and everything, it gives it buffs our next mongoose, a raptor, makes it free. So that's really powerful because survival is pretty heavily focus limited for its damage and to deal 30% additional damage. So like the actual proc is great. But the proc rate is every 24 seconds on average once you build out the map. So you get a free mongoose, a free buffed mongoose every 24 seconds. So like just uh, over two a minute and probably less in the world within. So maybe like two a minute. That seems pretty bad. Uh, just undertuned on, on both uh, BM and survival here, it looks to me. Um, the, uh, the alternative here is Beast of Opportunity, which is honestly even worse. So... Beast of Wrath calls on a pack, summon a pet from your stable for 6 seconds, so probably you're just gonna do some auto attack damage. 24% uptime on, uh, on it for BM, and that's assuming that we have the current huge Beast of Wrath uptimes, which we probably won't have, it's probably gonna be closer to 15-20% uptime. Uh, so that's pretty lame, like I can't imagine th this doing more than like, I don't know, 1-2% of overall, depends how tuned it is. For survival, however, it's like super bad. 5% uptime on this pet if we use uh, coordinated assault, which we sometimes don't as survival. And not only that, but the pet is obviously going to be way weaker for survival because it scales with BM mastery and survival mastery doesn't improve. Well, it does improve pet damage a little bit, uh, but not all that much. Uh, actually, no, that's uh, wrong. doesn't improve pet damage. So yeah, just kind of lame for survival. Um, so all, this whole choice note just like especially for its position in the tree very underwhelming the proc rate just seems uh, too low on both BM and survival especially survival though I would argue um, I think it should just like be, be tuned up really it just seems undertuned to me I think more procs would be good uh, but you can also make the procs more powerful but I think more procs is generally more fun than stronger procs especially if they don't directly impact your gameplay alright that brings us to the uh, capstone of this, which is called Pack Assault. Now, this has a very strange tooltip. I'm just going to read it to you as uh, Blizzard gives it to us. So it says, Vicious Hunt and Pack Coordination now stack and apply twice. And are always active during Call of the Wild, uh, Beast Mastery, and Coordinate Assault. So, okay, so I'm not 100% sure what the entirety of this tooltip means. But here's my best guess. I think that when it says Vicious Hunt uh, stacks and applies twice, I think the d extra damage it will do, th th that it talks about, we don't know how much dam that dam damage is, but it will be twice as powerful. Okay, so that just buffs it. Um, and so that's pretty straightforward, I guess. Uh, actually, th the way I've wrote it here is kind of wrong, because like, that will always apply. But then it says it's always active during Call of the Wild. So that just means instead of every other kill command that you get this buff, you'll get it on every kill command during Call of the Wild. Um, now for pack coordination, so pack coordination stacks and applies twice. Well, pack coordination is every second kill command, which is now going to be every kill command, in, at least in Call of the Wild, uh, causes your pet, ca pet to cast a basic attack. So what does it mean for that effect to stack and apply twice? So... Guess number one could be it causes the two basic attacks to happen instantly on the next barbed or mongoose. That would mean it st like stacks and applies twice, I guess. Or it affects the next two barbs mongoose instead of the next one. Uh, or it does both of those things. 
very confusing like i've honestly couldn't really wrap my head around it i hope the tooltip will be a bit clearer on what it intends to do in the future um like the cool down part the second part is straight enough forward enough like it just means you'll get a vicious hunt proc on every single um well on every single kill command in your cooldowns but although the problem here is that you maybe you won't always use coordinated assault and suddenly pack leader is not all as strong because you can imagine okay uh when we don't use coordinated assault, it's usually when we're doing Mythic Plus as survival. But this looks pretty good for survival. So I could imagine us being pack, pack leader uh, survival hunters in Mythic Plus. But then the, the capstone of the hero talent tree that we want to run could be completely worthless. Well, not at least 50% worthless uh, for us as survival hunters. That's a little bit weird to me. Uh, tying, like in general, tying things to coordinated assault, which is an optional cooldown, just seems a little bit iffy to me, in my opinion. I'd rather have it be tied to, well, not this particular maybe, but let's say, why couldn't this be tied to Fury of the Eagle instead, which is also optional really, but at least we use it more often than, um, than coordinated assault. I don't know exactly. Um, but yeah, hard to really comment on this until I know exactly what it does. Uh, like obviously it buffs the central mechanic. And we're probably going to get more basics in some way, shape, or form, which is going to be good for everything else. Um, so, yeah, that's about it, guys. Uh, I guess to summarize, I'd say I'd give this maybe like a 6 out of 10, I think. Uh, obviously, tying things into kill command is good. We're going to get some more kill commands, but the proc rate is kind of low, so we're not going to get that many more kill commands. The, the movement speed, like the sort of utility, mobility stuff, super weak in this tree. The uh, defensive stuff, it depends a little bit what they do with Menpet. I suspect they won't make it off the GCD. Uh, much, much weaker than Dark Ranger's Smokescreen that we talked about in the last video uh, on Hero Talent Trees. Two of these uh, choice nodes are completely dead. Like Scatter Prey is basically dead uh, on arrival. And Beast of Opportunity is borderline dead on arrival too. I mean, unless they just completely overtune uh, the pack. So yeah, then uh, there's a few decent mechanics like call the herd, a little bit of a flat damage, that's fine. Uh, all this like crit damage stuff is kind of interesting. It's more interesting for like theory crafters trying to work out how to build our characters around this. And maybe there's some min-maxes to do with how you uh, sequence abilities. For most people though, it's just going to be kind of passive, but at least, you know, you're going to have more pet damage on your meters. Um, yeah, so like it's all right. It's a 6 out of 10. Some good things here, some bad. Uh, I'd say I hope that they uh, you know pick up on some of the feedback I've provided and that you guys will also provide some good feedback. Please do provide feedback to me as well in the comments of this video and like, comment and subscribe on it. Uh, be sure to let me know what I can do better. What are your thoughts on uh, the hero talent trees, both Dark Ranger and Pack Leader so far. And until next time, I wish you all a wonderful morning, afternoon or evening. Bye bye.